I hope you got to know someone new. Head back to your seat, but let's remain standing. And if you've sat down, please stand up again because we're about to honour the Word of God that Pastor Levi Molher is bringing. And uh, Levi is a great friend of this house, son of Pastor Chris and Sue. And uh, I really believe that he's going to bring a life-changing word tonight. So let's honour him tonight as he comes forward, Pastor Levi Molher. You hope you're good. Very good. Hey, why don't you high five three people and grab a seat? Tell someone they're looking good. It is so good to be with you guys tonight. I'm excited to be back in Toowoomba speaking. I got told this morning that was it a fair dinkum missionary? And I thought that was cool. A fair dinkum anything is pretty cool. Uh, and before I start, I just want to say a big thanks to Pastor Chris and Sue. You guys have some of the best pastors in the whole world. And I'm not just saying that because my, they're my parents. I think some of the most um, releasing and believing, encouraging people I've ever met. So why don't we give it up for your pastors, Pastor Chris and Sue. Uh, so honored to have this opportunity to speak with you all tonight. Um, so I'm Levi. I'm from here originally. I grew up in Toowoomba, and four years ago, me and my beautiful wife, Talitha, uh, moved to Taipei in Taiwan. Uh, and if you don't know where Taiwan is, a little island off the coast of China. It has about 23 million people there, and it's about a third of the size of Tasmania. Uh, so it's great. It's happening. We live in a city of about 11 million people. Uh, so it's sweet. It's awesome. It's just it's all happening. Um, and we're just so excited to be back here in Toowoomba. My wife also is very pregnant, and we're having a baby, having a baby in two months, a little baby girl. So we're super excited about that. And I also just wanted to thank you guys as a church for all your praying, giving, and going. You have been an amazing blessing to our church, and our church, Lifehouse Taipei, just loves you guys over here. They're always so excited whenever, you know, the teams come over. They're always saying, when are they coming back? You know, when are we going to get to meet those guys and have our Aussie party? Um, so, yeah, thanks so much for that. And due to your amazing support, we've just been able to move into a new venue, uh, which has been a huge blessing blessing. Uh, we had, when the team was there last, they did such a great job of inviting people that our venue was literally packed, I think, beyond capacity. Um, I was afraid the root, the floor would fall through um, because there was no, there was only standing room in the whole place. Everyone just stood the whole time they were doing their party. And then church, I think we had people just standing up the back because we ran out of seats. Um, but because of your amazing support, we've been able to move into a new place. Uh, so why don't you give yourselves a big round of applause for that? Come on. Well, tonight I want to encourage us with a simple message, and I've called the message the power of God. Why don't you turn the person beside you and say the power of God? I think I'm getting my Australian accent back. Power of God. Power of God. In Taiwan, I have to be more like the power of God, but the power of God. But before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about clickbait. Does everyone know what clickbait is? You know, it's that little ad that comes up that you just really want to click on because it looks just like really interesting and like it's just speaking straight to your soul. You know, they always get these real specific ones like if you're over 65 and living in Australia, these are 10 medical facts you need to know. And or, you know, all kinds of other things like, oh, I bet you didn't know this person did this. And I was looking at some today. One was a uh, First, she put a plate in, wa in water. You'll never guess what happened next. And so I clicked on it, and I just got a big virus warning. Um, and I think <laughs> that's the thing with clickbait, right? It's a great title, but it often just leaves you feeling disappointed, let down, not really fulfilling what it, would, it was saying it would do. And I, I don't know if you've ever been clickbaited in real life. Um, me and my wife have experienced this. We were looking for a new house in Taiwan, and we went to the to the inspection, and we looked at the pictures. We thought, this is a great two-bedroom home. It's got a kitchen. This, is, this looks legit. And we walked in, and we thought, it looks really good. And then we were like, hang on, where's the kitchen? And where's the second bedroom? And we asked the guy, like, this is a little different to the pictures. And he said, oh, yeah, that one already sold. This is a different one that we wanted to show you. And we just felt so ripped off. Like, come on. We wanted a two-bedroom place, and, and you've brought us to this. 
And, and you know, I think that in our life sometimes, I, I know for myself, uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, but maybe you speak a big game, but then it becomes really hard to deliver. And it's like you clickbait somebody. And I did this recently. I got an amazing new job, a real blessing. Uh, but in my, in my, my, uh, my resume, sorry, I'm thinking CV. Does, do people call it CV or resume here? Resume, me resume. Um, I put in there that I had some Chinese speaking skills and reading skills. And that might have been slightly clickbait because uh, I got into the interview and realized the interview's in Chinese. And not only is it in Chinese, but it's very formal Chinese. Now, now my Chinese is it's getting better. It's kind of like street Chinese, you know? It's kind of it's the lingo on the street. I'm, you know, chatting with, you know, people selling food. And I'm like, yo, what's up um, that, in Chinese? Any Chinese speakers here tonight? N- <laughs> no. Oh, a couple up the back. Awesome. Very good. Um, and anyway, I, I ended up getting this job, but then immediately feeling out of my depth, like, oh my goodness, what have I done? I'm answering the phone. People are speaking to me in Chinese. And, and you know that feeling when someone says something to you and you're not quite sure what they said, so you just say, yeah, yeah. Has anyone ever done that? They say something and you're like, yep, yeah, and no, that's right, that's right. And, you know, and often you can get away with it, but occasionally you realize, hang on, they just ask me a question. And so like, hey, is it Agar? And you're like, yeah, yep, yep, yep. And then it's like awkward silence and you have to say, I'm sorry, I didn't actually really hear you. Uh, it's really awkward. And, and I think that in our life, to bring it you know, back to us, I think that you know, maybe we've all had a time in our life where we've found ourselves out of our depth in a situation that, oh man, how did I get here? How can I get out of this situation? And, and you know, where I guess our power is not enough to deal with the situation that we're in. And, and I think that we kind of live in this clickbait generation where people are just so used to being let down and, and broken promises and being disappointed. But I guess what I want to share with us tonight, that God doesn't just speak a big game. He delivers when it comes to promises. That God's promises for your life are not just clickbait, are not just positive thoughts or fancy titles. God has power to do something in your life. Is anyone excited about that tonight? I love what it says in in 1 Corinthians 4.20, and it says, For the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk, it's living by God's power. And it says in the message, God's way is not a matter of mere talk, it's an empowered life. You know, doing life with God is not just about some positive thoughts and nice thinking and some clickbaity kind of good ideas that we have. You know, I think that positive thinking is just ignoring the problem, right? Positive thinking, yeah, we're all good. There's no issue. And on the inside, we're like, oh, help me, please. But I think that living an empowered life with God's strength is, yeah, acknowledging, hey, there are some, pa- there are some problems, but God has got the power to get me through it. God is going to get me through the other side. I love the Greek word for power is dynamis. Turn to the person and say dynamis. Dynamis. It means miraculous power, ability, abundance, meaning, might, power, strength. And the Bible says in Timothy that that's the spirit that God's put in us, a spirit of power. And I want to share just some application tonight of what power God has given us. I've got three thoughts. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. The first one is that God has got power over your situation. God has got power over the outside, what's happening around you in your life. In an instant, God can change that. And and I know in my life, I went two years uh, where I was just, my visa was linked to Talitha because I, you know, couldn't get a job and I didn't have the right education. And then in one week, it was like God turned it around and now I've got this job. Uh, I still walk in there every day and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know if they know who they've hired, but it's amazing. I'm like the lowest level dude and my office has got one of the best views in Taipei. Uh, and every day I just walk in there, it's like, what? How did, I, how did I get here? It's because God has miraculous power where he can change a situation. It says in Exodus 13 to 14, 14 13 to 14, uh, it says that would be a tongue twister in, ta- in Chinese. Um, but Moses 
told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians, you see, today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Come on, with God, we don't have to live a life where we're just victims to our circumstances. We can live a life where I am empowered. I am moving forward. God can change the whole situation around me, living in God's strength. And I'd encourage us, you know, when it gets tough and, and when I feel like I'm at the end of myself, like there's nothing I can do and I'm just stuck in this bad situation, I'd encourage us, why don't we lean in to God's power and invite Him to come and do something in our situation and understand that God has got the power to change situations. We, we had a girl in our church. Uh, she visited actually our a church in Osaka. For some reason, just ended up there. She'd never really been to church before. And uh, the next week came back to Taiwan and, and came to our church. And after the service, she was in one of our, our life groups and, and saying, you know, I don't believe in God. But a life group leader was saying, hey, well, let's pray. Is there something you'd like prayer for? And she said, you know, I've really been struggling to get a job. I've been, you know, looking for a job. I haven't got any. Um, can we pray that I get an offer uh, from, you know, from any kind of job this week. She was looking for a job in the hotel industry. She said, I just am happy with a job. Uh, and they prayed. And that week she got offers from the three best hotels in all of Taipei. Ended up getting, she came back saying, I don't know what to do. I have to choose. And she ended up just choosing like, this is the best hotel in the whole city, getting a job there and working there. And, uh, you know, the week before she said, I don't believe in God. The week after she's like, I believe in God because he, he, he did something in my life because he broke through because I saw his power in my life. And then the story kept going. She believed in Jesus, but she didn't have a close relationship with her family. It was really broken between her and her mom, and there's a lot of tension and, and fighting and arguments, and, you know, things just weren't really good, and she didn't tell them about, didn't tell her mom about being a Christian. She just kept coming to church and growing in a relationship with God, uh, and then one day she went home, and she found her mom reading a Bible in, in her bedroom, and they started talking, and it turns out, yeah, the mom's been going to church as well. And the mom's been dealing with this really difficult um, kind of physical issue, and they got to sit together and pray together. And then they went out to, the, to coffee for the first time, I think, in like 10 years. And it was like God just took this hard, difficult situation and just spun it on its head in an instant. And I just encourage, if you're in a tough situation tonight, externally, some things are happening that are out of your control. Why don't we believe together? Let's believe as a church that God has got the power to turn that around. And I think all we got to do is stay calm. Yeah, come on, let's praise God for that. I love what Moses said there. It was just like, stay calm, give God control, you know, and even if it doesn't happen straight away, I'm going to keep believing because I believe that God can change situations. And I think all we got to do is just invite him in and say, God, would you come and change? I don't think God forces himself on us, but if we just say, God, would you come in and turn my situation around? I believe that there is no telling what God can do in your life. The second thought is that God has got power in us. He's got power around us in our situation. He's got power in us as well. And I don't know if you've ever felt like this, but sometimes we can feel out of our depth to change something on the inside of us. And maybe we can feel like, you know, my, I'll always be like that. Or my parents had a bad relationship, so now I'm just bound to, to have failed relationships. Or, you know, I'm always, I'm always just going to get angry about stuff. I'm always going to struggle with negativity. I'm always going to struggle with looking at that stuff that I know that I shouldn't. Um, but I believe that, hey, God has got the power to change you from the inside out. From the inside out, you know, being a Christian and following Jesus isn't just about behavior modification. It's about life transformation. It's about God changing your life. And I'd encourage you, maybe you've been on the journey not that long with Jesus. He wants to do big things in your life. He's not just a clickbait God. He's a God that can transform your life from the inside out. Just like that girl I shared this story about, the, you know, the hard relationships and God spins it on its head. I love what it says in Ephesians 3.20 where it says, Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. You know, like it's saying, hey, God's 
power works on the inside of us. And I think it's really important to understand why God wants to change us. Uh, You know, I think the reason God wants to change us is not because you're so bad, you're so terrible, I've got to change you, I've got to, oh, got to fix you up so I can just do something with your life. And But I think the reason that God wants to change us is so that we can live the life that He has planned out for us. The amazing, amazing life that He has planned for you. That's why God wants to change you from the inside out. So I think, you know, let's come to God and instead of saying, God, oh, would you change me because I'm so bad? Or God, would you help me not to struggle with that because I want to be better, because I'm so bad. I want to be good enough for you. Why don't we come to God with the attitude of God? Would you change me because I want all that you have for me. I don't want to miss out on a thing in this life. I want everything that you have planned for me. And I think that's really the the power of, of church, you know, that church is not just, a, you know, just a group of friends or a, a group of positive thinkers. Church is a hope of humanity. Church is where people's lives are changed as they encounter Jesus's power, as they're touched by his power, as God spins their situations on their head. So come on, church, let's be believing for God's power to change situations, to change us from the inside out. Not because I'm so bad and because oh, I'm so terrible and I wish God would change me, but just because I'm so excited, God, for the amazing future that you have for me. Final thought I got tonight, just as I get the keys to come up and join me. Oh, I got a message. Hello. We've got some messages about all the good things God's doing in Taipei today. Very exciting. One of the good things, I got a, a testimony from our church. It was our Chinese New Year services. Uh, we had really strong services, and the preaching was on time. And I was like, come on, that's a good, that's a good report. <laughs> was the highlight. Final thought as I'm wrapping up. Um, so we're believing for God to change us, change our situation, believing He can change the situation that we're in, believing that He can change us on the inside. As we open up maybe that dark corner of our heart that we didn't want anybody to touch, as we open that up, God can bring healing and, ho- and wholeness to where there was brokenness. And the final thought is that God has got power over your past. I don't know about you, I... Uh, you know, I wish sometimes that, that life had like a rewind button. I don't know if anyone else has ever thought this and you, maybe you say something and you just, you instantly regret it and you're like, wouldn't it be great if I could just do that again? Or you make a decision and you end up maybe even the next day just feeling like, oh, what did I get myself into? Maybe even you sitting here tonight and you're thinking, man, if I could just rewind the past five years, I would just go straight back and sometimes maybe mistakes we made or just, you know, not the best decisions can leave us feeling guilty and, and, and not good. And, and I've definitely been there in my life before. I really love what it says in John three nineteen to 20. It says, for our actions will show that we be- belong to the truth so that we'll be confident when we stand before God. I love this, but even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings and He knows everything. It's not an awesome scripture. You know, God is not ignorant. It's not like God just didn't see the mistakes that we made. God probably knows even more than I do the, the, how bad the things I've done are or the, the, the consequences to things that I've done in my life. But then he goes on and says, but hey, my power is greater than your feelings. No matter how guilty, useless you feel, God's power is greater than that. God's power, God's healing is greater than that. God's vision, God's purpose is greater than that. He's not ignorant. He has the power to heal, to take away, to turn guilt into forgiveness, to turn regret into purpose. That is the power of the God we serve. That, hey, even if I've made some mistakes, God can take bad and turn it into good. God can bring good from even the most difficult of circumstances. I love what it says in Psalm 103, verse 12. It says, He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the West. He said, it's gone. Hey, if you just reach out to Jesus and say, would you forgive me for that? If you would just say, I don't want to live like that anymore. God says, it's already gone. As far, it's just, it's not even in existence. It is so far away. It is totally removed from your life. And and as I was thinking about clickbait, you know, I think that the devil is really like the the clickbait king. He's the, the king of clickbaiting. He's all talk. He loves to clickbait you with things. You know, you think you're doing good and maybe you're feeling good in church and it's like a clickbait jumps up and it's like, well, remember what you did. Remember where you're from. Remember that thing that you said to that person. Remember those things you did that night. Remember that. The devil loves 
to clickbait us. But you know that that actually has no power over us. It only has power if you click on it. That's the thing about clickbait. It doesn't do anything unless you click on it. It just maybe fogs up the screen a little bit. You know, it just covers up maybe. It's, it's a little bit annoying. And But I think that, you know, in our life, when that clickbait comes up, when that, that you know, that memories from, from the devil of maybe things we've done or mistakes that we've made, we've just got to call it for what it is and say, no, I'm not falling into that clickbait anymore. I know what God's done in my life. <laughs> You know, you might say that, devil, but I know that God has forgiven me. You might say that I'm hopeless, devil, but I know that I have purpose. You might say that I'm a failure, but I know that I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who's in me. Come on, let's call the devil out on clickbait and say, I'm not going to click on that. Say, I'm not going to fall into that trap of thinking those thoughts again. He's all talk and no power. And I think as soon as we call it out, it's like the power is gone. I'm not going there. You know, I'm not going to. I'm not even going to go there because I believe what God says about me. And He is not clickbait. And that's what I want to encourage us with tonight, church, that God is not just some good thoughts or positive thinking. God is the power to change your life from the inside out so that you can live the life you always dreamed of, even more than you can dream of. So I want to encourage us tonight. You know, the devil loves to remind us, but why don't we stop remembering what we've done and start remembering what Jesus has done for us on the cross where He died so that we could be forgiven. Why don't we start, for, stop, keep, let's forget that stuff and remember what Jesus has done. Let's remember the times that He brought breakthrough and if He's done it before, He can do it again. I love that song we sung this way, Hindsight, you know. I don't need to know what the future says because if the past could talk, something about God can change the future. And <laughs> that's the words, right? Yeah, I think that's the word. Come on. If God God has done it before. He can do it again. And I'd encourage you tonight, if you need to see the power of God in your life, if you would just knock. It says in the Bible, if you knock, the door is open. If you would just ask God to bring His power into life, I believe that He could start a life transformation even this evening. So come on, church. We're not victims in life. We're called to be victorious through God's power. So why don't we start living like victors instead of living like victims? Why don't we start remembering what God has done for us instead of clicking on that clickbait and let's move forward in the power that God has got for us. And imagine just as a church, you know, when a problem came up, instead of speaking out about it, we just spoke faith. Oh, come on. God can do that. You know, oh, God can fix that. God can do that. And we're not not relating to people. We're just declaring what is true, that God is powerful. And maybe here tonight, maybe you might have even had circumstances that made you, you you know, you've just given up on believing for it. It's like, I don't know if I can believe for that because I've believed for that a long time. I'd encourage you, friend, get some faith again tonight that God can heal that family relationship. I think that somebody here tonight, that relationship, it's like it's been festering and God says, I want to bring healing into that. I want to powerfully move and heal and restore that broken relationship in your life. Maybe you're here tonight and, you know, maybe it's in you, something that you see and you just feel like, I'll never, ever change that. I'll just always be anxious. I'll just always be depressed. I believe that God would say, no, I want to break off anxiety tonight. I want to break off depression tonight. And when those clickbaits come up again, don't click on them. He's going to give you the power to overcome it. Maybe even here tonight, and you've just been pounded by your past. And when I said you need to remember that, hey, Jesus is bigger than your past, something spoke to you and you realized, hey, actually, I've had maybe some tough stuff in the past, but my future is even brighter with Jesus. Would you stand with me tonight? I'd love to pray for us. I'd just love to pray for maybe that something in the message tonight has just spoken to you and and. You know, maybe you've even been coming to church for a while and you're like, it's great and, and you really, you know, everyone's really positive and encouraging. But tonight you've got that realization that actually God is more than that. God is the power to change. God is the power to turn your situation around. So I'd love to pray for us if, if tonight you're just saying, hey, I would like to experience God's power in my life. Or, or maybe there's a situation that you need to see God's power in. I would love to pray that God would come and surprise you with how good He is. Why don't we just close our eyes? And if that's you, would you just raise your hand? I'd love to pray for you. You're saying, I would like more of God's power in my life. Awesome. 
Well, thank you, Jesus, for all these people here tonight. And I thank you, God, that your power is real. And I pray that as they taste and see, they would see that you're good, God, that your power can change situations. I just pray right now, God, that situations are turning around, God, that circumstances people are in. I pray, God, that they're going to have text messages at the end of the service where they see, hey, my situation is already changed. I feel like that's a God word for someone tonight. You are just a phone call away from your breakthrough, from your good news, from God's power are changing a situation, God. We pray for others, God, who've been struggling on the inside, and we thank You that You would break that off them right now, God, that as they lay that down at Your your feet, God, that You would break the power off and You would change them from the inside out so that they could live the life they only imagined that they could could live, God. And we just pray for other people here. Maybe they're being hammered by their past and mistakes they've made and and things that they're not so proud of. God, we just thank you that you've got the power to instantaneously separate that. And we just thank you that the devil has no strength over them, that they are set free, they are healed, made whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, why don't we keep our eyes closed for one more moment? One more group of people I'd like to pray for tonight. Maybe you're just here and maybe you don't know God's power. You've never experienced that. Maybe you wouldn't say that you have a relationship with God. I really love this scripture in the in the Bible. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's almost like God saying, I double dog dare you to try it out, to come and see that and see that I won't change your situation around, that you won't experience goodness like you have ever seen before. And, and maybe that's you here tonight, friend, and you've never decided to have to really just to believe in God, to have a relationship with with him. He sent his son 2000 years ago. He died on a cross so that we to, to pay the price for all the mistakes that we've made, for the things that maybe we're just not so proud of. He died so that that would have no power over us anymore. And if you would like to step into that power of living victoriously by believing in Jesus, I'd love to pray for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to count to three in a moment. And and I'd love you to be really brave and just take a step of faith. And on three, throw your hand up in the air and say, that's me, Jesus. I want to know you. I want to invite you into my life. And I believe that He is going to do things you never imagined were possible through you. So why don't we just close our eyes. I'm going to count to three. One, Jesus loves you so much. Two, He has an incredible plan for you. Three, right now, this is your moment. Would you raise your hand if you're saying, yes, Jesus, I want you. I want your power. I want that hope and that forgiveness. I see that hand. That's awesome. Thanks, mate. That is so good up the front here. Anyone else here tonight? You're saying, yep, I want to know God and the power that He's got in my life. Just as I look across here a couple more times, I'm not going to draw it out too long, but you're saying, yeah, that's me. I see that over there. That's awesome. Thank you. So good. So good going to just not draw it out too long, but anyone else here, maybe you've just been away from God and and you know in your heart that you're not living the life that God wants you to live. And tonight you're saying, hey, I want to get back on track with Him. If that's you, I'd love to pray for you too. And and, and if you would right now, would you raise your hand as well? If you're saying, I want to make a decision to get back on track with God. I'm not going to hold out too long. I see that hand back there. That's awesome. Thank you. That's great. Another hand there. That's awesome. So good. So good. Over there, up the back, that's great. Thank you. So good. Well, thank you, Jesus, for all these amazing people that are responding to you tonight. And I thank you that your power is real, God, that you are not just clickbait. You are not just a good idea. You are a real God who has the power to bring real forgiveness and real freedom and real healing. And we just pray for these people tonight that they would experience the goodness of you. I thank you that their sins are forgiven, God, that their mistakes are forgiven, and that I pray tonight you would fill them with an incredible hope for their future in in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, will we give a huge round of applause to all those people? That's awesome. That's so good. Hey, we're going to just say a quick prayer together. And maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you wish you did. Hey, if you pray this and you believe it with all your heart, it means the same thing. And, and if you did raise your hand, this is just putting into words the decision that you just made. So why don't we pray all together? Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. Amen. Why don't we give one more round of applause to all those people? That's awesome. Hey, can we thank Levi?